Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at two scenarios. One of them's called Catch Them All, easy, and the other one's called Catch Them All, hard. We'll work our way up to the hard one and start with the easy one. An epic showdown between cop and crooks. You, a lone cop, must stop all three criminals and recover the stolen money bags. If you get too far from the suspects, don't worry. They will be highlighted by a bright red beacon, so you can just look out for those. Be patient. This task can take a long time. Don't be reckless if you total your car, or if you get stuck, the criminals win. And we can't be having that. We cannot let the criminals win. The cops must win, because I'm the cop. If I was a criminal, then yeah, the criminals must win. Oh, look at that. One of them left a fat skid mark when they took off. Nice! You got my respect. Even though you're a criminal, you got my respect from that one. Alright, so I spun this guy out. Can I block him in okay? He's like not gonna get too far, because I'm like blocking him in. Busted! Got him! Yeah, by the time he was moving, like, my co-cop partner, I guess partner, yeah, he would have jumped out and pulled him out of the car already, and then he's under arrest. And look at that! What is going on over here, dude? I feel like I cheated, though. This isn't fair. He just spun himself out. You know what? Nah, that, that doesn't feel right. Unless he does it twice in a row, I want to do this legitimately. I did not have to take out the first guy, so that shouldn't be a problem. Just do the exact same thing I did last time. Oh, uh, look at that. The fat skid mark is still there. So first car, same as last time. Ooh, that might have even been better than last time. It was. I flipped them over. That is magnificent. So now we got the same two left. And let's see if they're going to crash this time. It doesn't look like it because I think they crashed right around here. And I see absolutely nothing. So this feels like a fair attempt at it this time. That's much better. And we're going to be able to hit these guys at a real high rate of speed, going over 100 miles per hour if I can remain in control through this section. I don't want to wreck myself, though, so we're slowing it down just a little bit because I, I couldn't remember exactly how curvy that was with this vehicle. I thought we'd have to slow down a little more, but we could have actually made it through probably at full speed. So there, guys, I want to wreck. Get this guy in the back. Who's getting the guy in the front as well? Did I just get a two-in-one? Yes, I did. They're both completely immobilized from that. That was beautiful! That was- that couldn't have been any better! It only took like a minute to do it. Now I have another idea I want to try now because I saw that. How they were so close together. If I got right in front of all the cars and just stopped in front of them, would there just be like a three car pileup behind me where I could just get them all at once? Or does not- not actually work because the cars behind me will have too much time to slow down. Yeah, it looks like they hit their brakes once I passed them, so by the time they actually would crash into me, they've already stopped and did a 180, right? Yeah, I, I don't see him doing anything. We're going to stop this guy. Maybe he'll uh, snitch on all his buddies. But that that's not going to work like that. So let's go ahead and try the next one, which is the hard version. And as far as I can tell, the text here is the same as the previous text. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I see one car directly ahead of me. And then one to the left, one to the right. We're going to do the one directly ahead of me first. Because that was probably the easiest, I would think. Because we can just charge at him and then tap him. And he is done. There's no way that thing's going to drive very much after that impact, right? Yeah, that's that's a dead car right there. So now we can go ahead and go to the next guy. So up here, we got to choose left or right. We're going to go with the guy who was originally on the right, which means we want to go to the left. Probably. Whenever I start saying left and right too much, I always just talk too fast in my own mind, and I'll say right when I'm going left. Right there, I'm pretty sure I said it right. I'm pretty sure I said we were going left, and I went left which was originally to my right. Oh, stop it. I'm making it too confusing again. And I'm driving off the road. All right, we got to focus on just driving good. I got position in my sights, so I know exactly where I want to go. I just got to find a way to actually go there. It's pretty obvious that we want to go to the right up on this corner. What's not so obvious is how steep this corner is. You can kind of tell coming up to the corner, I was a little bit scared. I would like slow down a little bit, slow down a little bit. I didn't know how far it was going to be and how steep it was going to be and all that kind of stuff, but we made it through fine. And we almost have caught up to the red car. He was just in my sights a second ago. I can't see him right now, but I can see his little flying indicator right there, making it a lot easier. And I gotta say, I really do like those flying indicators. I don't think I've seen them in any other scenario, but they are very convenient because it changes it from just aimlessly driving around and hoping you run into them to searching around the area for some sort of landmark for where they're at. And then when you see the red in the sky, you know about where they are and you know to try to hunt them down in that position. Makes it a lot more interesting to me when you're doing it like that versus just kind of like, okay, there's a car around here somewhere, go find them. So there we go, we got that guy and I'm not going to mention the fact that I almost spun out right there. 
I'm showing him who's boss. That's why I hit him. No, actually, I just wasn't paying attention. I was looking in the sky for a bit, saying maybe I'd be able to find the dude and his little floating red indicator, and I was not paying attention to what I was actually driving. I got to make sure I don't do that while we're just driving normally. If I do that while I'm driving normally, that's bad news because I will wreck the car. You see, I wreck it at five miles per hour. I will definitely wreck it at 105 miles per hour, which is almost what we're going at times. Like right here, we're up to about 90. Five. Then I slowed down a little bit because I got scared of the corner. And I'm looking at this opening right here. I still don't see any sort of red indicator. I figured a nice big opening like that, you'd be able to find them, but nah. And then going over here, this is like the other good angle to see, I would think. Nothing. Wherever these guys are, they are hiding really good from wherever I am. I know East Coast USA pretty well, I thought. But maybe they found some secret tunnel I don't know about, and that's why I can't find where they're at. Slowed down a little bit too much right there. I'm going to try going to the left here because it feels like their position should be somewhere around here. And my idea right now is what if I'm swerving like left and right? It gives me more views because if I'm going to the left and going to the right, I'm seeing in like a 360 around me to hopefully find wherever they are. Versus if I'm driving in a straight line, I just see what's in front of me mostly with a little bit of visibility between the trees here and there. And if they're not in front of me, they're just not in front of me. They might be to my side, which is why I want to do a lot of turns to be able to see them if they're at my side. Although there hasn't been really many opportunities because I want to do paved roads only because I can't trust myself on those dirt roads. Although, that was with the other vehicle. With the Ibishu cop car, this thing does have four-wheel drive, I'm pretty sure. So I could trust it a little bit in the dirt, I think, if I absolutely need to. I don't want to have to trust in the dirt, but I could if it comes to that. And that really might be the case because so far, I can't find them. I have absolutely no idea where they are. Like, it's not I don't see their car. I don't even see the little indicator above their car to know where it is. So, you know, just a minute ago, I was saying, oh, it's so nice because you're not just driving around aimlessly looking for them. Well, because I said that, I ended up having to drive around aimlessly looking for them. That's always how it is. If you say something, the exact opposite is always guaranteed to happen. At least if you're me. On that topic, I will not win the lottery this week. Maybe they're in the town somewhere. That's... My best guess, because we're coming up to the town soon, so we'll be able to check that out and see if they're hiding in a building or something. Like, I don't know where they could possibly be hiding. There's no hiding spots. And I think the AI is designed where they're just going to keep driving around until they eventually get caught or they crash into something. So here we are in the town. Are they in the town? No, I, I didn't see anything. Like, you can see over the buildings when we were entering the town, and I saw nothing. So they weren't in the town. And now... I don't even know where to drive anymore. Like, they could have gone anywhere on the map, and I still haven't got a sniff of them. This is a little bit confusing, and I'm cutting the dirt a little too close, and there goes my front bumper. Okay, see, right now, the only enemy I have is myself. I gotta make sure I stop trying to wreck the car accidentally, like I was just in the dirt for a second right there. Way too much. That could have destroyed the car. Gotta stay on the paved roads, and gotta still keep my eye out for wherever they could be. Like, this is gonna drive me crazy, not being able to find them at all. Maybe what I should do is, like, drive around the perimeter, and maybe I'll find them like that. Because my current strategy of swerving all over the place doesn't seem to be working out as well as I hoped. It worked out pretty good for the first scenario. Well, okay, that's not really true now, is it? I didn't have to go and hunt for them. They were just easy to find. I didn't have to even look at all. Like, I saw their red things immediately after I took out the previous guy, so there was no search at all. And right here, this one's almost all search, and that's it. So I think this is one of the more outer roads right here, so we can kind of just drive along this, and that's basically driving the perimeter, and we'll be able to see where they are, hopefully. Like, I'm looking in the sky. I see nothing. Looking across, like, the water right there, nothing. These big, wide-open areas, you'd think you'd be able to see the indicator. Wherever they are, they're either, like, always on the exact opposite corner of the map, or they're just hiding really, really well. I don't know which. And the difficult thing is, I know eventually I will crash. I gotta find them before I crash, because this thing isn't driving the straightest here. And you see how I'm cutting that dirt right there? Yeah, I should not be doing that. There are rocks in there. One tap on a rock and my whole front suspension is ruined and I lose. I do not want to lose after searching for them for like, what does it say? Six minutes and 38 seconds? So the first two guys probably took about two minutes combined. And then I would say we've been searching for this guy for almost five minutes straight. 
wherever he is, he is world's number one hide and seek master. And I'm trying to keep the speed below 100 miles per hour. But every now and then I'll just keep accelerating like right here and then we're going 100 and almost 20 miles per hour. And when I start doing that, it's very likely I'll crash. Again, like under 100, I feel safe. I could go into a corner dangerously fast, slam on the brakes and not crash. Once you get past 100, then you go into a corner dangerously fast and you're done. You're toast, you're crashed. And that last five minutes of searching was basically wasted. All right, let's see. How about we try going to the right? I know this is the outermost road there is. There's no road outside of this one. So if I want to do that strategy where I drive on the outermost road, we're doing it now. Although I'm pretty sure I have driven on the outermost road earlier as well. It's just, they are so good at this. <laughs> like I'm channeling my frustration into compliments for the AI. Cause I am a little bit frustrated here. Just driving around without having a purpose like this. Oh, I tricked myself right there. I saw that car for a second. I was like, that's it. And then I realized, no, that's the car you already got. The, oh, wait, that's the, there it is. There it is. I see some right off in the distance. I finally have a visual on them. And where in the world are they? They're in like this area of East Coast USA. I don't think I've ever been to, period. No wonder I couldn't find them. I didn't even know this area was here. Oh, look at that. They wrecked themselves in a hole. Those dirty cheaters. See, that's what they did. They put themselves in the farthest corner I never tried to, and they stuck themselves right in the hole, so they made it as hard as possible for me to find them. Wow, okay, now I'm gonna show you the easiest possible way to complete this scenario. This is a little bit cheating-ish. Well, it is completely cheating, but it's also not cheating at the same time. So let me go ahead and reload the scenario. And once the scenario loads up, you just sit here for a few minutes, and you're gonna go ahead and hit start and check this out all of their cars are broken because they overheated all of them because they were just pointlessly revving their engines so there we go we did the mission in 7.01 seconds i guarantee you that's probably going to be the world record when i upload this video nobody's done it faster than that because nobody else accidentally left the scenario running in the background and realized oh hey the AI cars are all broken and you can do it like that in no time at all. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. Till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.